Yo, 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 this is Dorky Diggity Dave, and today we are talking about how to beat Bishop just like a ninja. Let's do it. Welcome back guys to another video in the Ninja series. We are talking about Bishop today and how we can get around that L1 and L2. Those are actually a little bit tricky, so let's dive into it, not waste another second. Pass. Okay, first off, I love this fight. Bishop brings back skilled evasion to the fold. You gotta be strong, you gotta be fast, and you gotta be fresh from the fight. He is a hero, after all. Anyway, moving on, when fighting Bishop, you want to keep your energy attacks at a minimum. He absorbs energy and converts it to both power and prowess. Even while taking damage with energy attacks, it's significantly reduced. Not only that, he's gaining power for each charge and tick of energy damage, so you gotta be real careful with that. Just take a look at the reduced damage he's taking from Iceman, as his energy resistance is ridiculously high. And he normally does about 200 damage, and it's reduced down to 55 here. But he's stacking prowess and power the whole time. He can regenerate that damage by eating up the prowess too, if he wanted to. Uh, usually the AI doesn't do too much of that, but uh, in your hands, I'm pretty sure you'd take advantage. So just keep that in mind when fighting Bishop, energy damage equals not good. So this is a real easy way to push him to L3, and if you're not careful, you can get KO'd. Into oblivion. If you're unsure what your champion does, there's always that little eye you can tap on to get specific info of what kind of damage your champion does. Now, with that said in mind, here's just a few energy champs. There are more, but here are just a few for you to see. Okay, so let's talk special, shall we? His special one is a multi-hitting buster of ballistics. And it's a tough one to completely and cleanly evade, but guess what? We can do it. Check it out. So here we have evading the initial hit, of course. And then watch his right hand. What you're looking for is a full extension of the right arm and not a moment before that. That is your evade point. Now the timing here is very crucial because that evade needs to include the first two shots. From there, it's a steady rhythm of evades. You'll want to get that extra evade in there at the end just to make sure you've evaded all of it. Because if you get too comfortable and you don't, you could possibly get clipped on the end. Now in regular motion, you can see it's much more important to do it right on that arm extension, right here. One more time at half the speed. Now let's try that again with the sweet sound and visual cue, shall we? Now this can be a little bit tricky because the sounds of the gun are very against the sound cues and your movement cues. So let me lower the volume and try this a couple more times. One thing to keep in mind is that he gains energy damage for all his normal attacks after his SP1. And it has block penetration damage as well, so make sure to steer clear because even if you're blocking, it does a significant amount of damage. Okay, on to the SP2. This one is a little janky because so many of the specials in MCOC are based on forward movement and impact animation. I talk about this a little more in depth in the How to Fight Doctor Strange Like a Ninja video. You can check that card out right there at the top. Now with Bishop, you would think, okay, let me do my evade on the forward motion of his arm, like right here. But that's not the case. That actually gets you clipped on the end. This particular special has two tells. First, the visual tell. The full extension of the arm, not the anticipation of it. So the actual full extension of the arm and a tick after is when you can evade. Also, you've got the audio tell. There's a sound that happens right before you're supposed to evade. It's right here. That whoop sound is your pre-warning. So if you play without sound, this isn't going to help much, but you can still use the visual cue. 
So let's go ahead and give this a shot with the sound and our sound cues and the visuals. Awesome. Now, as side notes, you don't want to leave him with any power or as little as possible as he has a persistent power meter and he'll carry that over to the next fight. Now, if he gets an L3 on you, you've practically sacrificed your next champion, especially at higher levels. So keep his prowess as low as possible and keep his power as low as possible also. Another reason to keep the prowess low is because that adds damage per stack. Now stacks can be added in stacks of one or stacks of three or stacks of six, depending on what the situation is. Now, in this particular case, a stack could be one, so you're stacking 10% per stack, but it can also expire a stack of six or nine, and that still counts as one stack. So remember everyone, no heavy use of energy damage. Don't get parried as he's build up prowess, and definitely don't try to take him to SP3 if you can avoid it, because then you'll have to try to play chicken or keep him locked down for nine seconds before it starts to do any damage, but he's going to launch it on you anyway. You're gonna get it. Once again, this is Dorky Diggity Dave. You just learned how to beat Bishop just like a ninja, and I hope that it helped you out. And if you want to see other characters and how to beat them, go ahead and check out the card up above because there is a whole playlist with other champions to learn how to beat as well as the ninja series. Also a card up there. So if you liked the video, and I hope you did, go ahead and click subscribe, click like, leave a comment, share it with your friends, share it with your mama. All that stuff helps me out. And remember, stay dorky. And I'll catch you on the flip.